Thomas was a really outspoken man and he, he was really uh, shocked about my death, um, as were all of my family. And, but he was really outspoken about it. You know, he was saying like, you know, none of it's true. You know, what we're idiots, we're all idiots to believe all this crap, you know, that he was telling us. And, you know, he was quiet. He went into this real angry phase of grief, you know, that grief stricken anger type phase. And a lot of people were listening to him. A lot of the disciples were listening to him. And he eventually fled because he thought he would be one of the people who would be chased by the Romans to actually be killed as well. So he fled. And as he was fleeing, I stopped him on the road and talked to him about what was really going on and, and uh, asked him to go back. And I told him that I'd appear to, the whole, to a whole group of them inside of a room um, if they locked the door. And, uh, and I told them if they set it up how I'd like it to be set up, I'll appear to them and show him that I'm telling the truth, that it was all true. And that, that was the time, you know, it was recorded in the Bible about, about Thomas the Doubter. It was my brother, Thomas. Um, and what I did is materialised a body that still had holes in my wrists. Um, that he could poke his finger through and feel that it was actually flesh because he wasn't convinced otherwise so um so i did that and i appeared in a in a room that was a, in a locked room in a locked with locked doors locked house actually uh just to demonstrate to quite a few people there there were there were quite a few of my friends there just to demonstrate to them that you know i was still alive you know and it was the demonstration that i was still alive that became so real to them and so they worked through lots and lots of grief during this period, obviously. And then on top of that, having that demonstration that I was still alive increased their faith so much. You know, just their faith before was right quite small, but after that, their faith was like really large. And, and because of that, many of them received divine love in fairly strong abundance over the next 50 days, which caused the events of Pentecost, which um, where they all got together and actually felt God's love in the, like a room like this. It was a similar amount of people to hear this actually too. Um, and they felt God's love enter them. And they all had different experiences as a result of that love entering them. And they were fully convinced of everything after that point. And that's, so I didn't need to be on earth anymore after that really. So what I did after that was I, um, my, by this time my, my child Sarah wasn't born yet. Um, but, but um, Mary was, had to flee to Egypt and Sarah was born in Egypt and I, I became Sarah's guide and guardian. It's the only person I've ever been a guide or a guardian to, uh, is my daughter. And uh, then about, uh, they, the authorities found out where they were so they fled there and they went to France on a ship. And I spent most of my time after that uh, teaching in the spirit world, te te teaching as many people as I could on earth in, in the spirit state and spending a lot of time with Mary and Sarah as well. But by this stage, Mary was quite grief stricken and uh, quite angry with me too because she knew I'd made a choice to, to pass on that particular day and she felt she wasn't ready. And so there was lots of anger that she felt towards me, and still does actually. Mm. What happened? Where's Thomas now? He's a celestial spirit. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually in the one-minute state with his soulmate, so in the twenty-second spirit. As are like there's a there's nearly twenty thousand souls in that state now, and the, the majority of them, uh, well, a lot of them were ones from the first century that I knew. <coughs> So my mum and dad are in that state as well. Uh, all, all, my, all my brothers are in that state. My two sisters are not quite in that state yet. Um, so yeah, pretty much all my family's in that state. Yeah. Yeah. But when I was on earth, none of them believed. <laughs> Even my mother, you know, it's a common misconception that my mother believed and supported me the entire way through. Um, my mother did support me at the end, but even at the end she was still very confused. Um, she was proud of me but very confused about everything I was saying, but she would often follow me around saying I was crazy to everyone, uh, for, for different reasons. You know, sometimes it was to try and protect me from people, 
Um, other times it was because she did think I was crazy. <laughs> and she, she went through a stage where she just thought that I went into a sort of a religious zealot mode. You know, she felt that I'd just become this religious nut, nutter. And she did feel I was crazy um, for a long time. And it was only right near the end that she could start feeling some divine love flowing for her listening to the teachings. Uh, that she didn't feel that. But she felt, my father felt cursed uh, for having me as his son. And uh, he just felt that I was, um, he, he felt that I was his shame. So I've had quite a few emotions to deal with about that uh, this time around. Um, and, uh, but uh, after I passed, he, he realized that actually what I was speaking was the truth and after I'd reappeared. Um, so, so then his shame turned into his own self-torture self really, right? Mm -hmm. And so my father went into this place of feeling really upset with himself for not realizing the truth earlier and, and because of his guilt he, he left the family home and he just traveled, he just traveled and traveled and traveled talking about the truth. Um, but a lot of it was driven by his own feelings of strong feelings of guilt. Um, Did he pass into the first sphere? My father, no, he passed in the second sphere. My mother passed into the third sphere. My soulmate passed into the third sphere, but still had first sphere emotions. All of them had first sphere emotions to deal with, but their soul condition was in a different place each time. So my soulmate passed into the th like she could have gone to the third sphere, but she had first some first sphere emotions to deal with. She was tortured to death, so had a lot of a lot of emotions to deal with about her torture, and uh, she had a lot of feelings towards me as well of rage, rage with me, and rage. Like we had a period of time in our lives, a year and a half, we spent that we were actually together and happy. <laughs> And, um, and you know, like, she felt that wasn't long enough. Mm -hmm. um, That's understandable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It isn't long enough. No, I feel it, I feel it wasn't long enough either. <laughs> so now you want to kick back in the woods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, it's one of the emotions I have is, is mm -hmm. like, one of my resistances is that, like, do I want to do that all again, you know, like, and I just sometimes want to just kick back in a nice little tropical paradise and just spend all the time with my girl and and what we create together. But you know, I know that's not why I've come. But that's a feeling that's quite strong in me, you know. And it's driven by some of this guilt that I still have about about choosing to pass and watching my soulmate just die inside, you know. You said your mother. In the first century, um, you experienced a bit of divine love. Was it at the end of your life or at the end of her life? At the end of my life, she started experiencing some divine love, particularly after I passed, because they, when you, when somebody passes, if you have huge grief, you're actually clearing away a lot of causal emotion. And as you're clearing away this causal emotion, if you're longing to God for love, you'll receive a lot of love as well. So, you know, that, that happened to her and then I, it, it, but it took many years before she had some peace with, with it all. It was nearly, you know, 15 years before she really had peace about what had happened. Um, the Apostle John, who, who's known as the Apostle John now, um, he looked after her, um, she stayed with him. My, what happened to a lot of my friends is that they just, like, my soulmate lost all of her friends in that one instant as well. When she left, she had to abandon all of her friends to leave to save herself and so so she lost all of her friends. So if you can imagine like losing your partner who you had this really loving, like intense relationship with that that well the truth is that there's probably not been anyone on earth yet who's had the relationship that we've had that we had um, together. And then then she, then I passed, and then within a few weeks she had to leave, leave all of her friends, all of her family, to, to go to a place that she'd never been to before. 
And then within a few weeks after that, she gave birth to a child that she wanted me to be present with, which I was present at actually, but you know, of course she couldn't feel me being present at this point. And, and by this point she was quite upset with me uh, in her grief. And so I couldn't easily appear to her without her just being angry with me anyway. Um, so, you know, and then she had to move again after that as well. So it was pretty distressing for them. And it was very distressing for our unborn child, Sarah. And even Sarah, a lot of Sarah's emotions now that she's working through right now are related to those events. Yeah.